Major League Pickleball Mesa rolls on here from Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. And we have another thrilling matchup for you. Michelle McMahon, Dominic Catalano, Cameron Irwin in the booth. Our Cameron Blackwood is courtside for this one. And it is a matchup between the Milwaukee Mashers and the California BLQK Bears. Our first game consists of the women's doubles matchup between Callie Jo Smith and Lucy Kovalova taking on Andrea Koop and Megan Fudge. The win probability is slanted in favor of Callie Jo and Lucy. They play together often. What works the best about this combination, Dom? Well, they're a veteran team. They've been here before. They know what it takes to win. And that probability, though, all weekend, we've been able to throw those probabilities kind of out the window a lot of times. And that's why we play the game. And so playing on center court here, with a, a really must win for the Mashers here and they're 0-2, so it's gonna be tough for them to kind of try and mix and match here. But on paper, this Mashers team is one of the best, but they're 0-2 so far. They have some work to do today. The Black Bears 1-1 one one here in Group A. So to your point, Dom, it is a win or almost go home situation. Depending on where you land, Lucy Kovalova will kick off the serve here in game number one in our final round of group play here for group A. Also in group A, the New Jersey Fives unbeaten, a perfect 3-0. and That's a stacked group to try and get out of. I will say, too, when you're looking across the net right now, you've got Andrea Koop and Megan Fudge. This is a team that could be very dangerous. They're not to be taken lightly whatsoever. Megan Fudge has really dedicated herself to her craft, especially as of recent. She's gone full pickleball, full time. They actually travels around with Ryler DeHart, her husband and her two kids, and now in a van traveling or a, a trailer all around the country making every single pickleball tournament. So she is truly dedicated to her craft. So look for just even more improved game from her. And then Andrea Koop, one of the ultimate legends of yeah. the game on the women's side. She's deadly, um, fantastic tennis background, and she can bring a lot of fire your direction. Megan Fudge, of course, stepping in for Maggie Brasha, who was injured heading into play. Lucy Kovalova kicks off her serve. Andrea Koop right off the bat. What did you like about that point, Cam? Uh, you know, first and foremost, you're seeing Coop kind of dictate terms, sliding into that middle, covering uh, more with that forehand side. Andrea Coop with a forehand rib, the former UCLA tennis star, and Megan Fudger, partner, former University of Illinois tennis player. Tennis background obviously helps across the board on this court here on Championship Court. There's Kelly Jo Smith, a former tennis player in her own right, dominant with that forehand. You're going to see a lot of power from Kelly Jo Smith. She's going to come at you, challenge you, and look for them to challenge Fudge here early. Just short into the net, and the mashers tie things up early. Yeah, this is going to really rely on Megan Fudge in these moments. They're going to try and isolate her as much as possible. Callie Joe loading up on that backhand, just catches the top of the tape. And like you said there, Cam, they're trying to go to her, but Andrew Coop's getting big already in the middle and taking a lot, almost 75% of the court up. Smith. It's going to be a balance right now for Megan Fudge. The speed ups are going to come her direction. Whether she resets them or she's actually able to counter is going to be a big factor to me. Callie Joe Smith, the ultimate competitor, so good with setting up her finishes. And that angle right there is what's gonna put that ball away. You can pound that ball as much as you want back to the baseline, it's gonna come back. She creates the angle and hits the winner. 
And seeing again, just getting a little bit caught right now for Megan Fudge in terms of her getting up to that kitchen line, trying to figure out if she wants to cut that ball down or if she actually wants to counter. Callie Joe Smith, another Division I tennis player, playing at the University of Utah. And a body bag situation. She says sorry, but not so sure because she comes away with the point there, Don. She's not going to take that back for one <laughs> second right there. She's taking that point all day long. Such a fun player to watch. She's electrifying on every play, can Yeah, and again, you continue to watch Megan Fudge right there. She's cutting each and every single one of these balls, maybe trying to find a little bit more of a block versus trying to take the pace off. Tough miss for Kovalova. So the Black Bears will take it back, trying to find their way out of a three-point deficit. in her own right at the kitchen. Well, yeah, that's the key right there is they're trying to keep Coop honest on the backside every once in a while. The problem is for that is that if you let Coop get involved, she's going to make something and create something like she just did right there. That ball sails long for Coop. Well, and for Coop right now, she's going to feel like she's going to have to be the creator, right? Finding that offense. So a, an interesting speed up right there in the middle of the transition zone. She's going to feel the pressure. Trying to find the balance of not doing too much. That ball is called wide. Well, it's, it's right on what you said, Cam, is that she's almost playing what we would say traditional mixed doubles. She's coming over and taking 75, 80% of the court trying to create. There she is again, so strong on that forehand finish down the line. What set her up for that? Well, again, she's coming in and she's creating on her own. She creates with the speed up, causes the high block, and then she's able to put away. Joe Smith just carving that ball yeah, to Cal the opposite sideline. Callie Joe had so many op options there. Well, she works her feet around that ball. She could have sped up middle, and that's what holds Coop to that middle, opening up the inside out dink. Just a near miss for Coop, top of the tape, wants that one back. Yeah, she's just a hair late getting there. And why is she a hair late? Because she's having to take so much of the middle right now. They're going to expose that if they can, are Callie Smith and Lucy Kovalova. Any adjustments so far you're seeing on either side, Kim? Again, I think it's going to depend. Megan Fudge right now cutting. She's doing a nice job with her thirds. But then ultimately, see, and you can see her continuing to try and find that she keeps kind of going with that shot. She, like, it's getting challenging because she tr keeps trying to cut that ball back and it keeps popping up on her. So either she needs to get her hips out of the way and be able to counter and actually send that ball down to the feet of the opposition, or she's got to be able to s reset that ball more cross court, give herself some neutrals. It could be the feedback that she is receiving on the sideline right now for BLQK. If you're their coach right now for Megan Fudge and Andrea Coop, what are you telling them, Dom? I'm going to try and talk to Andrew and be like, let's let Megan take a little more there. Let her keep her side. Maybe instead of 75%, stay 65. Megan Fudge is more than capable of holding her own on that side of the court. What I feel like is that she's not as confident herself because Andrew Coop's stepping over and taking so much. Let her take her balls. She will control that. And then once you see Megan Fudge being comfortable and she gets in her zone, she's going to be a lot better. So I'm going to be talking to Andrew and being like, look, let her take some of those and let her heat up a little bit and see where we can go from there. And on the other side, Callie Joe and Lucy Kovalova finished number one ranked in women's on the PPA tour in 2022. So they are a very difficult team to stop. Just shy again, Cam. That's the that's the shot you've been talking about. Yeah, a little different there on the drop, though, that time instead of the drive, which she's seen primarily or the speed up, to be honest. Just wide for Callie Joe. 
And don't forget the pickleball action stays in Arizona for the next two Carvana PPA tours. JW Marriott Desert Ridge Open is February 1st through 5th. And the Grand Slam, the 16th through the 19th. You don't want to miss that. And this game is close once again. The beauty of rally scoring, you can never count anyone out. for the Ernie, what did you like about that? Yeah, great heads up play there by Megan Fudge. I like the movement from Callie Joe, but this is just one up right here from Megan Fudge to be able to see the Ernie and then she just tries and goes full body at her. Fudge, that's the block shot she was looking for, that counter punch. She finally found one in the middle of that as opposed to cutting that ball back. So look for a little bit more rhythm in that regard. Start building off that. But also to the credit of Kovalova and Smith, they are just relenting, <laughs> unrelenting in their pressure towards her direction. Perfect word for it. They haven't let up since this game started. Tough bounce for Smith. And we have a one point game. When you're seeing already early here, Andrea Coop is staying on her side. She let Megan Fudge, once they change ends, take her side, and she's finding that rhythm a little bit more. Andrea Coop just overpowering the mashers. Well, that's it. You saw Megan Fudge work her way back up. Andrea did not step in front of her at all. She worked her way up through the transition area, textbook and then Andrew Coop able to come in and finish. in at the right time and now I think we got a timeout here from the mashers as they're sensing a little bit of an issue now as Megan Fudge has figured it out on her side. So in your mind Cameron what caused the shift in momentum because for a while there the mashers looked like they were going to run away with this one. Yeah it was a combination of a few things. Uh, you think about a couple balls in the net from drives on the side of Kovalova and Smith that was one aspect the other is the fact that that cutting that slice from Megan Fudge she's doing a much better job keeping that ball down. One thing that you have to be very careful with with a slice is slice puts backspin on the ball. What does backspin do to the ball? It makes it stay up in the air. It hangs longer. So you have to be very careful. Even though it's a flatter dink, it can still raise up just enough. And it also is compounding. Backspin, when all of a sudden a topspin ball is coming your direction, is compounding that spin. So it becomes very, very dangerous. You saw Lucy, or excuse me, Callie Joe Smith take a shot, one big speed up because that ball is going to bounce and it's going to give her exactly the type of spin she's looking for. Excellent insight, Cameron. Very good points. Perhaps the part of the transition of coming from that tennis background to pickleball, finding that balance. <laughs> Kelly Jo Smith goes for it, and it's long, so the Black Bears stealing the momentum here. A little bit of frustration on that overhead right there is the Black Bears are starting to come back in and annoy the Mashers here. That ball is wide. The Mashers absolutely needing a win here. 0 oh and 2 in the tournament so far. They were so close, Dom, to taking down the New Jersey Fives. It was incredible. Had the serve on their paddle in the Dream Breaker and couldn't finish it. So two points and your record looks entirely different. 
Joe see. Smith takes the net and runs with it. But see, that's the ball that's hanging up right there for Megan Fudge. You have to be so careful putting this dink. You can see it right here. Just enough. There's the backspin. And actually, that ball hits the net and goes over the top of her. But that's because that's how much topspin it allowed it to actually crawl over that net. Joe Smith can absolutely take over a game when she wants to, and you saw it on display there. A little unfortunate there for Andrew Coop and the Black Bears as that ball clipped the tape, pops up, allows Kelly Joe to come in and finish. There she is again with that lethal forehand. You can't pop anything up to her or you're going to be punished. Now I'm seeing Andrea start to step in again, and that's not how they got back in this. She stepped in in the middle there, kind of threw off Fudge a little bit. And now Milwaukee back out of pop. different pattern, two different looks for Megan Fudge. And I wonder, there was some conversation between Coop and Fudge uh, just about two rallies ago. And I think it was maybe we can get the ball over the backhand or the forehand side of Lucy Kovalova. Let's start to work in some rolls and see if that creates some opportunity. And it just did. Great dink from Lucy Kovalova right there. Taking that ball out of the air, letting her paddle do the work. That's a new carbon uh, Onyx paddle, so it's got a little more grit to it. It's gonna allow uh, that paddle to do a lot more in terms of adding spin. Kelly Joe miss hits it, but still finds the inner baseline. How much is the paddle technology evolving the play in your experience, Cam? Wildly, right? <laughs> like now you can see paddles just do absolutely absurd things. The contacts, especially dinking at the kitchen line. What a finish for Callie Joe Smith and Lucy Kovalova. What set that point up? Well, well, I mean, you're, yeah, you're looking at Lucy Kovalova and Callie Joe Smith on their toes moving forward. And throughout that point, as it kept going, you saw Andrew Coop and Megan Fudge just starting to back up, back up, and get on their heels. So a relentless attack from the Mashers. And now they are on game point here in the women's doubles. The ever so important women's doubles matchup. Timeout is called on the court. And so momentum and game point swinging on the side of the mashers. This one has gone back and forth. And as we all know, we see the momentum change in Raleigh scoring so much. So on the side of the Black Bears, how do you stay in this one, trailing four? against the Mashers who have all the momentum. Well, I mean, we looked at two matches last night, Cam, and you were on the call for those. There was a 20 to 10 lead that got eliminated and a 20 to eight lead that got eliminated last night and caught up. So it is never over when it is rally scoring and you're able to catch up. You just need a few side outs in a row, get some points on your serve and you're right back in. This is not a huge deficit. the Milwaukee Mashers run away with this one. Not yet, anyway. Great step in there. Nice job getting herself to the kitchen line and controlling, staying disciplined on that contact. Fudge start to pull out. She did such a nice job rolling those dinks cross court, but she pulled out that slice and Callie Joe is on top of it, covering the middle, so prepared and ready for the speed up off that ball. Andrea Coop thought she had it. And game point continues for the Mashers. Yeah. 
And serve returns to the Black Bears. You have to win on your serve. So we're frozen at 20, Dom. What'd you little see? ambitious there from Callie Jo Smith, trying to pull the trigger a little too early. I'd like to see her stay in that point when they are on at game point there. And now we have ourselves a game again on championship court. A one point game, both teams frozen on their respective scores. Win by two, win on your serve. Fighting for their tournament lives, Lucy Kovalova earns it back. Game point returns to their side. And Andrea Coop goes for that shot. What would you think? A little flick forehand there from Andrea Coop. Don't see that much. A little, little tricky in the middle, and she, I think she shocked Kelly Smith. <laughs> Rarely do you catch Smith off guard. That time, Coop did just that. And there she is again, Callie Jo Smith, so good on that forehand. Yeah, so good. And again, just sticking with that game plan right there. You can see this ball right up in the middle, and she's going to attack just like a crouching tiger. She's right on that ball. Lucy Kovalova with game point once again on her paddle. Once again, the Black Bears just hanging in. That's just incredible. Unbelievable. Incredible diffusing of the attack, right? From both Coop and Fudge. They did a beautiful job. Quit, really nice soft hands to be able to get that ball bouncing back within the kitchen. It's now three game points, at least. The Black Bears have fended off. Callie Jo Smith and her hands just too quick, Don. Yeah, she defended the attack from Megan Fudge really well, but it really wasn't a hard attack from Fudge. Trying to catch her off guard, but another game point. A couple of out balls you think maybe hit, Dom. What what are you exacerbated by? This game should be over. Kelly Smith played an out ball, but the hard part is she couldn't get out of the way. No. She had to play it because the ball was on top of her. So she plays that out ball, and we're still in the middle of this matchup here. Tie game returns on championship court. That was one heck of a point. It's excuse me, not tie game quite yet. What did you think of that decision, Cam? You know, it's interesting because it's this balance for Fudge. This is where she's most comfortable. This is where I know I can handle the ball. So trying to switch to something else is going to be challenging in this moment. from the Black Bears. I like that they changed the pattern. Fudge, instead of sending that ball cross court or even into the middle, it was one of the first times you actually saw her go line to line for Cali, and it created a different look for them. Yeah, three let courts in the middle of that. A left-handed overhead from Andrea Coop, and we're still here. So make that a fourth game point surrendered to the Black Bears. What a setup by Megan Fudge there again, Cam. You're seeing it. The pattern has changed for Megan Fudge. She's not continuously going to the same spot. She flipped middle there on her dink, and it caused the pop-up and Andrew Koop able to step in and tie this game up at 20. 
Megan Fudge, two points away from closing in on game one on their side. That ball catches Megan Fudge. But it was going out of bounds, and again, same thing. She's now rolling into the middle right here. Here's a good look at it. This is the difference. See how that ball's traveling down? So Callie Joe Smith then has to reverse that spin with a top spin. So even though it went Callie's way, that's a tough ball. So now the Masters need two on their side. We are frozen at 20 both sides. Ooh, Black Bears staying alive with the power of Callie Joe Smith. I just didn't like the decision from Smith right there at that moment to take that last ball out of the air. She got excited because she was in the point, but I think she took that one a little prematurely. Let that ball bounce, get right back into the point. Andrea Coop looking for the backside of Callie Joe Smith seemed like the right choice, just not executed. I don't know. That was very, very risky right there to go at <laughs> Coop up the line. She was right on that with her two handed backhand. Just an unfortunate let cord right there. Callie Joe Smith. Great again, game point on their side. Yeah, great power on the extension right there. She's all the way up above her head, elbow nearly locked out into just a beautiful stroke. Side out is called because speculation ensuing on championship court. on this one. There's a challenge called on the court for a foot fault. Mashers are challenging is what we are told. I believe the football was called on the mashers. So that's why I heard Andrea Coop cheered as she believes it's a side out. Just casual we're gonna see here. Interesting turn of events here. This could be a huge call. Because the ball is in the hands of the mashers the call does not stand. And they would be and have a game point here. If not, we're still all square at 20 and here we go again. So from a player's standpoint, do we like the freeze at 20 points? Uh, it totally depends on who you ask. <laughs> no, it's, it's totally interesting. If you're on the bad end of a freeze, you're obviously going to be saying, no, I'm not a fan. But here's a look. I don't see that foot of Callie Joe Smith touching the line. I see some blue in between. Yeah, I, think I don't think around. And I think there's a little bit of blue in between. So remember, they will be able to keep this challenge if they are correct. And that there was celebrating on the court saying she saw what we saw oh there okay oh, that, the ball that, that ball is bouncing yeah. they're they're showing the replay after prior to that i don't see a toe touching the line well, we all see blue but we've all been wrong before that's a very good point no, I wanted to see that in motion, slow motion, because I wanted to see where that foot went after. Because if it did slide in after, we've seen that call, and that is a foot fault as well. But it looked like she was clean. The next ball she stepped in on had bounced. So I believe that she's not in. Now momentum, right? Now we've been sitting for a couple minutes. These ladies are out of rhythm. So who does that benefit? <laughs> <laughs> they both have to play through all it, right? In the same boat. Exactly. Right. I mean, if, you, if you're the Masters, you want to go right now. Like, we just got that point, 21 20, let's go. Let's run. If you're the Black Bears, you came all the way back and you battled. And now you're like, I don't want to slow down. Now we battled, we tied it up, let's go. And remember, the context of this group play is that the quarterfinals are coming up later on this afternoon, which we will have you covered for. 
at 3.30 p.m. Mountain Time and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time. So right now these teams are jockeying for position, trying to fight for their tournament lives and a lot of money on the line. And in terms of standings, Milwaukee Mashers have yet to win a match. They are 0-2 despite coming oh so close several times. And the Black Bears, 1-1, one one, looking to improve to 2-1 and one in Group A. Yeah, so for the Black Bears, it's win and you're in. Okay, if they win, they go 2-1. and one. And the New Jersey Fives are 3-0. and oh. It would make St. Louis 1-2, and two, and it would make the Masters 0-3. Oh so it's easy for, BL, for the BLQK Black Bears right now, win and in. If Milwaukee wins, now it's all up to the numbers, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll leave it up to the smart people to do the numbers. But right now, BLQK, the Black Bears, are in control as far as this goes, as far as their destiny. And that's why every single point matters, because it comes down to the point differential percentage. Which, by the way, in the challenger level, for one team to make it out, it ended up being only 1% to the cutoff to the next day. 1% of difference, which ultimately was about 10 or so points to that, that uh, challenger level. Yeah, so it was the Arizona team yeah. that almost made it on. They were watching a Brooklyn team battle Brooklyn in Brooklyn Aces battle through the Dream Breaker. They needed them to lose the Dream Breaker 16 or less, and they end up winning or losing, 19. and they had 19, right? And so Arizona got eliminated by a couple points, and it all comes down to it, like you said, there's not all the points matter. They do. I mean, you look over in Group C right now, Seattle Pioneers 3-0, and but the next three are 1-2, and two, and the percentage is so, so similar. And in Group B, it's a little bit clearer. The Los Angeles Mad Drops, a perfect 2-0. and Florida Smash, 2-0. and Of course, we still have more group play matches taking place right now. And here on Championship Court, if you're wondering what we're still looking at, they're still reviewing and challenging the mashers are the foot fault called on Callie Jo Smith. They think it's pretty clear and obvious that they were not touching the kitchen line, that that call would be reversed and they would be able to keep their challenge. I'm trying to think of something that we're, we're missing here Chance. because this is a, a longer review. We're going on probably five minutes now under review uh, to see what's going on here. It didn't seem as black and white as we saw. That's an important match for these guys because 3 and 0, you're sitting pretty, you make it a pie and not have to play tonight in the board finals. Yeah, right now, uh, the Mad Drops are up 1 0 over the Florida Smash, who they are facing off against on the grandstand. They're now in men's doubles Wilson and Arnold versus Johns and Brett Meyer. And Wilson and Arnold right now have the advantage 14 to 10. Of course, you can catch that on our multi-stream coverage. That's right, Cameron. Perfect plug, perfect segue. So much incredible pickleball taking place this weekend. You both have done an excellent job covering all of the events. And pickleball really continues on with this season. The PPA Tour is all over the place in February. Well, really, not all over the place, but here in Arizona anyway. We've got the upcoming Carvana PPA Tour stops, the JW Marriott Desert Ridge Open, and the Grand Slam coming up in February. Here's, again, what they're looking at with this challenge. Some space, I see nothing but blue between the toe and the line. And even as you continue on, she's not stepping over her feet, actually go back. Right. Right there, they go backwards, so I think that is not a foot fault violation, however. We'll hopefully soon find out. Continue to discuss here on Championship Court. We're showing it right now on the big screen as well. Everyone's looking up going, all what right, are we let's doing get here? to it. Let's, let's go, get back to it right okay. here. Okay, no football, moving on. The guys are on court warming up. They're, they're getting, trying to get ready for their match. When was the last time you saw six people on a pickleball court? <laughs> 
happening right now. <laughs> this might be, we're bringing the team format to a whole new level at MLP. Just be prepared for season two. This is what you might be, no, I'm just kidding. That's we're going to start, we're going to start playing triples. Just start playing triples, see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're going to get an answer here. The call is overturned. There was no foot fault called as we discussed. <laughs> Reaching the conclusion we thought we would. And so, game point returns to the Milwaukee Mashers. This would be a huge win for them in searching for their first team win. Every point counts. The biggest prize money in pickleball history on the line. That ball is wide, so ball and serve returns to Coop and Fudge. We're frozen on 20. Joe Smith just punishing Megan Fudge for the placement on that one. Not to sound like a broken record, but Callie Joe Smith doing a really nice job again. Just the ability to not only recognize that, but then also execute on top of it. Nice job. Kovalova with a whip of a forehand, and so game number one goes to the Milwaukee Mashers. Lucy Kovalova, Callie Joe Smith earning their team a one to nothing edge in this matchup, and they need it, Dom. How big was this win? Well, women's doubles matchup is always the first match. It is huge to get your team off on the right foot, get the 1-0 lead going into men's doubles, but the difference maker for me in that one was Callie Joe Smith, especially right there at the end, using her reach, taking balls out of the air. She pinned Fudge back, they end up on top. Huge win for the Mashers, and so that leads us into the men's doubles matchup coming up next. But first, it is time to send it down to Cameron Blackwood standing by with the winners. Cameron. Speaking of that challenge we just had, how much does it stop the momentum moving forward, and how are you able to regroup and come in with the win? You know, we are just trying to stay loose, so we, that's why we were hitting in between. So we, when we were waiting for the result, and it was in our favor, so we are, we are lucky to get that one. You guys go up one to zero. Looks like you had a clear strategy heading in, targeting Megan a little bit more. Talk to us about that. Um, well, Lucy told me that she loved my forehand yesterday. So she said, I dink, you lean, and that seemed to be working great uh, until the last little bit when I started making a few errors. I'm like, gosh, dang it, sorry. Uh, I think we all uh, have those moments, though, where uh, you have the ups and downs and your momentum and the momentum shifts. Uh, but that's what's so nice about having Lucy next to me is that she keeps me solid and grounded. She's like, you're good. Just I, I dink, you lean, reminded me of our strategy, and we came out on top in that one. So it's great. There you have it. Mashers go up one to zero. Men's doubles coming up next. You guys don't want to go anywhere. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design 
for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. We're back in action here in Mesa, Arizona as Major League Pickleball rolls on here with event number one. And we are moments away from the men's doubles matchup between the Milwaukee Mashers owned by Mark Lazary and James Blake. A couple of icons there and the California Black Bears owned by Richie Twazen. And the men's doubles matchup will be the Mashers featuring Andre Deescu, DJ Young, his partner, and the Black Bears will be Dylan Frazier and Federico Staxrude. So as this one plays out, Dom, where do you feel strategy-wise these teams lie on both sides? BLQK, so for the Black Bears, you have two players in Frazier and Staxford. Everyone looks at Staxford as a power player, an aggressive player. Staxford def Staxford's defense is incredible. He proved it yesterday in a match that we were on a call for, and Dylan Frazier gets every single thing back. His hands are impeccable, they're incredible. You're gonna see their defense on display from two guys on the other side of the net, DJ Young and Andre Deescu, who are gonna try and be big. DJ Young is gonna try and use his flick roll, and he's gonna try and be aggressive. So it's gonna be kind of a defensive offensive battle, but when BLQK and the Black Bears can flip the script and turn defense into offense is where I think that the Masters will be in trouble because I think they can do that a little better than the Masters can in the Black Bears turning that defense into offense. So defense to offense, one thing to look out for. What are you looking out for in this one, Cam? Oh, well, one thing you always have to look out for is Dylan Frazier's ability at the kitchen line. Just some of the great hands that he possesses, his ability with a quick recoil and reset is phenomenal. And you also look on the other side, the creativity of uh, DJ Young is always on full display. There's some length on the side of Young and Deescu as well. Uh, I believe DJ will be playing that right side. Uh, he's become a little bit more comfortable in that regard. We'll see if that's how they set things up now but then also Stackstrud you know he's been known not only to be more of a power player but also more of a singles player but he has gone full send into pickleball as well really really focusing on that doubles game just as much uh, and working on some of that soft stuff like Dom mentioned. Mesa Arizona has been an electrifying atmosphere so far for us here we are very fortunate to be in front of a great crowd all weekend long first serve is underway DJ Young will kick us off on the side of the mashers. I will say too, DJ Young used to, there used to be a knock against him that maybe he wasn't the most consistent and he took too many chances, but he has been doing a really nice job being a little more disciplined in his approach. Backhand flick. Exactly, and that's what you have to be so weary of with Dylan Frazier, just like J-Dub. Those guys obviously love to play alongside one another, but they both possess that. That ball is clear in. Frazier getting out of the way, but misread it. It's exactly like you were talking about, Cam. You gotta be ready, because DJ Young has all the tools in the toolbox, and right there, a little inside out flick right at the body of Frazier. A foot fault violation, I believe. Yeah, I believe Frazier was in the kitchen. Frazier, one of the few on the court without a strong tennis background. He's an athlete, though. Baseball, basketball, football. Still a college student taking online classes. And how about another backhand flick? Why is he so good with his hands in that way? Dom. He takes the ball out of the air better than most. He has, uses his length and his reach, and he doesn't allow you time to set up when he does that. Yeah. 
He also spends about a million hours on the pickleball court <laughs> with the man who pretty much invented it, which is yes. J.W. Johnson, right? <laughs> Learning by osmosis. <laughs> well, yeah, and being on the receiving end of it. That was a powerful punch by D.J. Young on the side of the Mashers, taking the one-point lead. Deescu with the Ernie. Graceful and effective. Yeah, it's a good read from Deescu as Frazier was dinking from the left side to that opposite left side. And Deescu read that so well. <laughs> Same thing, just to see how quick and how compact. And the, one of the things with Dylan Frazier's ability to use that wrist is it's, again, compounding in the sense of he's using their power against them. Mm. It's almost like a ping pong flick. DJ Young into the net there. Like that flick wasn't even that hard, but it's in the right spot, right at the right shoulder of DJ Young and surprises him. goes Ernie again. But from oh, nearly a cross-court dink, that came off the paddle of Dylan Frazier, which is that much more impressive. It wasn't fully cross-court, but out of the middle of that direction. Helps to have the frame that Deescu is working with, former tennis pro from Romania originally, now lives in Florida. gone wrong that time. The Masher is stealing momentum. That's just dirty down the line from DJ Young. He holds this on his paddle and just flips it flat down the line and gets Frazier leaning back towards his middle. Into the net for Stacks Rude, a rare error there. So the Mashers running away early here. like Bambi on ice in the middle of that rally as he chased down that ball, but still amazing recovery by him to get back into that point. Andre Deescu has been so dominant from his side. The issue there for Staxford is he's trying to hit that on the run. He needs a split step, stay in that transition area, play that off two feet, and he'll be right back in that point, but he tried to rush it. DJ Young, I like that slide. He actually decided, he's like, hey, I'm taking a little bit middle here. I'm, I've got some momentum in this rally, but ultimately goes the direction of the Black Bears. sets himself up for the finish. You're laughing, Dom, why? A little frack, so that, that forehand overhead, right? And he's just slapping that down. But you saw him leaning in so early to get that. Yeah. <laughs> Andre Deescu tags. Federico Staxrud couldn't get out of the way fast enough. Staxrud and Frazier have been working a lot of middle dinks and trying to kind of cause chaos in terms of communication on the side of the Masters. And what's super interesting though is it's kind of dependent on who's actually taking that ball. Both of the Masters are being very quick with their feet and looking to Ernie as much as possible. So look for that motion on the exterior of the court. Just shy that time for Deescu. Momentum has been trading on both sides so far. Yeah. 
and a hands battle goes in favor of who else but Dylan Frazier. Well, and it's his deception right there. He does not take a big backswing. All he does is flick that with his wrist, but his wrists are so strong. It's such a good speed up causing the error. called long an ATP effort by DJ Young. But see, this is a great example. You see how DJ's having to take three shuffle steps back because Dayescu had previously take, taken that middle ball. So there's a lot happening in that middle zone right now in terms of adjusting to every single contact between those two. That's a great point. Staxrude will take us back to serve as the California Black Bears tie things up 10 points apiece. Frustration sets in for Dylan Frazier as the Milwaukee Mashers, the first team to 11, so we will have an end change. What's the discussion right now on the side of the Black Bears, Tom? Well, I don't think there's any game changes right here between either teams. Both teams are executing their game plans properly. Like Cam said, BLQK is pushing that middle on the Mashers, trying to cause some confusion in there. They ask you, though, doing a good job of taking control in there and saying, hey, I got the middle, DJ, don't worry about it. I'll take this. And then on the flip side, you're seeing the Mashers play a little more conservative, which I like, okay? Because Staxrude and Frazier are going to handle the pace. They're waiting for the right opportunities. And so that's why I think you're seeing an 11-10 game here on the end change. It's as close as it can get. Yeah, you know, if I'm uh, the Mashers right now, one of the things I might consider is actually letting DJ slide a little bit more middle and start to add a little bit more pressure to the backhand side of Staxrude because you have Dayescu with the length on the Ernie causing pressure around that corner and it's been working from time to time when he's been able to do that. Come on, no. And right there you can see DJ starting to slide a little bit more. He just missed that one covering middle, but it'll be interesting to see if that's what they utilize from here on out. Dylan Frazier beats DJ Young on the backside. And that's the danger of it, right? So great adjustment on the side of the Black Bears. The same thing, they recognize DJ sliding middle. Now there's more on the backside. Yeah. Right, they ask you right there, trying to make something happen, right? Now you're, you're sensing that pressure. All of a sudden, the Black Bears out to a two-point lead. goes top of the tape, so the Mashers closing the gap by one. DJ Young back to serve. DJ Young getting frustrated. That tends to be the liability on his side is consistency. But that's where you got execution. That They're trying to do exactly that, trying to let DJ get in there. Excuse me, I misspoke. It is to the forehand side of Stackstreet, but the play is still the same. And he got away with one right there, did DJ Young, as he popped that up to Dylan Frazier, with Frazier off the top of the net. Dylan Frazier picking his moments on when to attack flawlessly in that point. Speculation on the court. So, I believe a foot fault was called from one of our officials. But I'm not sure on who. Seems like it would have been on BLQK. Cameron Blackwood saying she didn't mean to call it. Dylan Frazier puts an end to any discussion on his side with a wicked forehand flick. So fast with his hands. Not that time. 
Andre Dansk, who just backing up the Black Bears. What did you see, Don? One good speed up from Staxter. He started that firefight, and it was at about 60%. It was didn't have any pace on it. So DJ Young and Andre Dansk, who flipped the script, went on offense, put that away. Better choice would be. Slow down. to DJ Young who remained patient on that side. What was different that time for DJ Young, Kim? You know, I like this. At this ball right here, it was a nice little bait ball from DJ Young. He actually, you saw him flick it and then slide to open up that forehand. He was ready for it again. Same thing, but this time he dropped his hips. So there's different ways that you can clear your body out of the way. One is a slide, two is dropping your hips and being able to get that paddle above your head to have more range. And DJ Young doing a beautiful job of that. The BLQK players, very familiar with DJ Young, very. All these players are. When DJ Young starts growling like he did after that point, <laughs> it was an immediate timeout from the Black Bears. They know that's growling. a hot DJ Young when he's in the points like that. And the last two, he's been all over and Kim, you point out perfectly that was a bait ball from DJ Young two points ago to Dylan Frazier. He wanted him to think that he was going to pop up. He slid perfectly and just punched that ball down. DJ Young starting to feel it now. I'm sensing BLQK is going to regroup. Let's go backside on, on Andre Deascu now. Let's go to his backhand and let's see what he can do on that side if he can beat us because I don't think he can. He doesn't have a, a real big flick and he's pinching middle so hard that when you go behind him, he's going to be full sprint to get to that spot. We'll look out for that. DJ Young, originally from Valencia, Spain, currently lives in Dripping Springs, Texas. Played tennis competitively from the age of 4 to 16. 15, 15. That skill displayed on the side of the mashers back to serve. likely sailing out of bounds, but nothing you can do about that. Yeah, but it's going so fast. That's right at the body of DJ Young. You can't drop fast enough to get out of the way. I like that, actually. It was unique from DJ Young. On one of those blocks, he actually choked up his left hand on the paddle to create a little bit more balance on that block. I liked that. Actually, he did it a few more times in the middle of that rally. So watch that left hand. It allows him to be that much more left hand dominant. You know, obviously, oftentimes people talk about a backhand and how it's a left handed forehand. He's showing the epitome of that. <laughs> <laughs> Milwaukee Mashers trading point for point, this time on top by one. This would be a huge two to nothing lead if they could get it against the Bears. Staxrud forcing the issue, tie game. The ball never came up to DJ Young. The ball sat down so low, and he did exactly what you were saying, Cam. He sat with that second hand on, trying to dig that out, just couldn't do it. How about a rip from Dylan Frazier? He'll take the bounce off the net, says he's sorry, but nonetheless, a line drive. He's not, as we all know. Watch for Frazier to maybe start to maybe attack that left shoulder or more towards the left side of DJ Young's body. The reason being is because he's had success kind of finding that right shoulder now on the head, and with DJ sliding to his left, there may be opportunity as that ball is going to be ending up a little bit more on his body, trying to catch him while he's sliding. Good stuff, Cam. Andre Deescu with the serve to Frazier.
A backhand flick gone slightly wide for Frazier. What would you see? Well, actually, it was it was the counter punch, right? This is a nice move by DJ Young because look at the extension there. That's really hard to control when your elbow is fully extended for Dylan Frazier to bring that ball back. The Milwaukee Mashers come away with game number two on the side of men's doubles. Andre Deescu, DJ Young, triumphant in this one. What ultimately went right on their side, Tom? Execution. I mean, it was 11-10 on the end change. It ends 21-19. Doesn't get any closer. Who was going to execute their game plan better? And it comes out. The Mashers do. Um, I like DJ Young at the end. He turned it up when he needed to. He hit the correct shots. We've seen DJ Young in years past get overly aggressive, get in his own head. He is a different player the last year and a half or so where he's calmed down, played his game, and it showed right there at the end. He finished it for them and was the difference here for the Mashers. So yeah. it all comes down to the mixed doubles matchup, which we will have in just a moment. But first, it is time to check in with Cameron Blackwood standing by with DJ Young and Andre Dascu. Andre, Dylan came out pretty hot at the beginning of that match with a lot of movement. How were you able to neutralize him and take this win? Uh, I think my drops got better. DJ was doing a great job in the transition zone, not just absorbing some phase, but countering really well as well, and that gave me a lot of confidence on my drops. And as soon as we were able to get the ball to bounce in front of him, I thought we were in pretty good shape. You started to get hot there at the very end. What were you seeing on the other side of the net there that you were able to crouch down and hit those scorpions? Yeah, I mean, I, I drove with Deco quite a bit, and, you know, he kind of headhunts all the time, so then I got to be able to, like, either dodge it or hit down on it, and that's how I learned how to do it. There you have it. Masters go up 2-0. to zero. We're heading right into mix. Don't go anywhere. Something make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, cause I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I've seen it from the van, now I'm dancing on the half eyes. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the outside. Upside, upside. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the upside. It's hard to find supplements that work. Thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. <sighs> plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Back on championship court, it all comes down to the mixed doubles matchups. The BLQK Bears hanging on for their lives against the Milwaukee Mashers. Michelle McMahon, Cameron Irwin, Dominic Catalano in the booth. Cameron Blackwood has you covered from the sidelines. And so the home team gets to declare their matchup second. Right now it is a matchup between Andrea Coop, Federico Staxrude, against Andre Deescu and Callie Joe Smith for this first of two mixed doubles matchup. With these combinations in mind, Dom, what's the early strategy on both sides? 
We're going to look for Andre Deescu to get big in the middle and try and set Kelly Joe Smith up. On the opposite side, I think you're going to see Stackstrud let Coop play her side a little more than typical. So I think that's going to be the difference is if Stackstrud can keep Deescu honest behind him. Win probability skewed on the side of Smith and Deescu. We'll see how this shakes out. First serve underway. That was an incredible play by Andre Deescu. What a reach. His paddle was completely parallel right there. Beautiful job by him picking that ball up and finding a nice angle. And then you pair it with that. Come on. <laughs> Always the worst. <laughs> Staxrude will take back the serve to Deescu. Staxrude looking for the reset. The Mashers will take it. Stackstrude right down the middle. Easy put away for him. Yeah, just slapping that volley down. I love this angle right here. Take a look at the extension. Doesn't try to do too much with it, but keeps that ball low on the bounce. Joe Smith hanging right in in that one. The recovery from Callie Joe Smith, right? She goes for the Ernie and then recovers to the transition area. It's a perfect spot so she can reset, get back in the point. Just wide, BLQK. Man, those short hops are just so tough. Those are some of the times you need the most touch to be able to control that, especially going line to line. Joe Smith. A slippery little slope right there. She finds the middle. She had Stackstrud leaning to his backhand. He thought she was going to flip down the line a little bit with a dink, and she flips right through the middle. A rare shot that makes it through the middle. Smart play by Smith. Andrea Coop paints the baseline with that forehand roll. It's so easy to overcook this ball right here. Take a look at the technique from Coop, though. She does a nice job sliding to her left, getting that paddle just on the outside of her hip so she's able to find that middle. And again, same thing like Dom had mentioned. She's pushing all the way to the middle, really opening up that forehand, so Stackstrup giving her plenty of space. long mashers on top by two she but got a little excited right and it's just she overhits that the ball was sitting up for her it's well overcooked one you get, as you say yeah and you get a little careful too she actually take that took that ball much more on the center line of her body Stackstrud speeding it up on Deescu. That's textbook spot, right? She goes right hip on him, jams him up. He can't do much from there as far as attack. He tries the reset, can't do it. Started with Coop going toe to toe with Andre Deescu. Love when the ladies speed it up on the guys. Well, right there, unforced error there from Stackstrud. Just trying to reset, go inside out behind Deescu. Finds the top of the tape. All tied here at six now. from Callie Joe Smith. And again, that's where you're starting to see Coop slide more middle, slide more middle. It's usually the third ball that gets you into trouble. There's the first, second, and all of a sudden she's now on the same side and foot as Stackstrud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, missed opportunity. She wanted that one back. Callie Jo Smith and eating that one. It's turning that defense into offense. They were pinned behind the baseline, six, seven, eight feet behind the baseline. The difference was Andrea Coop just punched the backhand back, allowed Deescu to reset. They got back in it, but like you said, Michelle, Callie Smith wants that ball back. Yeah. BLQK fighting for their lives right now. Stacks Root, textbook. Yeah, just so smooth on this. Just take a look at this replay. Full extension, nice flick, and that's still within two feet of the baseline. Beautifully done. Yeah. Callie Jo Smith taking control of the point and not looking back. You know, it's so fun to watch uh, so many of these athletes because in this type of format, you go from playing women's doubles to mix to men's, all of the above. And Stackstreet had just been playing on the right side with Dylan Frazier. It's fun to see him and his capabilities on the left now. Patience before the aggressive attack by Callie Jo Smith. Did you like that choice? Yeah, I mean, patience is always good unless you feel like you really got an opportunity, but that one just getting a little bit away from her. She doesn't miss many of those. See right there, Stacksford is pinching hard middle and Callie Jo Smith is keeping him very, very honest and yeah. going behind him. He's got to trust Andrea Coop's going to cover there for him a little bit. What defense from the Milwaukee Mashers, keeping them alive in this point, giving them the one-point lead. And Andrea Coop just went over to Stackstrude right here and gave him a pat on the shoulder after this one. And that's getting hard. Stackstrude full extension. You got the backhand of Coop right there. That's the dangerous part. The middle moves. It's wherever the distance is between you and your partner. Yeah. Andre Deescu jamming up Andrea Coop. Nothing she could do to get out of the way of that one. First team to 11 is the Milwaukee Mashers. That defense to offense has been showing up in this one, Doc. Yeah, it's exactly right. And you're seeing the pressure put on by Andrea Coop and Stacksford. Again, but the Mashers have found, actually, Callie Smith has found the backhand of Federico Stacksford numerous times to set her and Deescu up. I think that's a little bit of a difference here. In the end right now, again, like we said before this match, or this game started, I want Stacksford to trust Coop a little more in the middle. She's a veteran of the game, one of the best females out here. Trust her in the middle, hold your ground a little bit, let her set you up a little bit more, trying to set yourself up all the time. BLQK is the home team, which means they are trying to counter with their best, or so they felt their best against this matchup, but this is as it relates to the crowd, the Michelob Ultra Joy Cam. No shortage of joy in here in Mesa, Arizona. Stop number one for the Major League Pickleball Tour in 2023. This crowd has been lighting it up all day long. They've been here with you, Cameron, since 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> They showed up yesterday. I was going to say for the past two days. The past yeah. two days, yeah. you've been hanging out with this crew, the loyal fan base, and one that we appreciate. It makes the environment so fun for these players to be a part of and for us to call it. Deescu gets caught on his backside. Smart play from Staxroot. Gets a little love off the tape, too. He'll take it right now. Andre Deescu, the big man in the middle. Even though his flick may have not been that powerful in terms of the speed up, I like that he stayed within the point, as did Coop, continuing that firefight. So he's trusting his length on those second and third contacts. Milwaukee Mashers need to win this one, and they're done. They lose, and we're going to a fourth. I love that ball from Callie Jo Smith. As she steps into it, she takes a little off. She keeps it in play, forces Staxford to hit another ball. Unfortunately, they don't come out on the end, but I like the movement from Smith. Yeah. Tough ball for Callie 
Jo right there. Because she had to step off the line with Andre coming across and picking up a ball at her feet, she was in a great position to be able to counter punch. Tie game on championship court. Rips it down the middle, it works. The masher's back on top. Well, she holds it on her paddle so long on the outside of her right hip, and she has Staxford protecting that line like he has to, and she creates the hole in the middle, finds it perfectly. And, you know, to your point, Dom, you create opportunities from previous points. It's not even necessarily that it's the hold, which was a great point, but it's also the fact that she had been attacking that backhand side. So it's forcing Stackstrup to respect that speed up up the line, and it's really causing issues up the middle now. So the Milwaukee Mashers on top by two. They are one win away from sealing the deal in this matchup. Meanwhile, the California Black Bears trying to stay alive. They were the home team. They got the, the choice as to who to put out against Andre Deescu and Callie Joe Smith. What did you think about their strategic selection there when it came to putting Saxroot and Coop out first? Well, I mean, I like the matchup. It's not a bad matchup for the Black Bears. It really isn't. It's just about, like we said, it's the execution. At this level, the highest level of pickleball that we have in the game, it's about who can execute better in the end. And right now, it's a little on the edge of the Mashers. And again, too, you have the Mashers with two games in their back pocket. Now they're two games in their back pocket, a two-point lead. You can play free and easy, knowing that if we win this, it's all over and we're done. Callie Joe Smith looking to build on that, hoping to be done after this game. basically sitting in the front row when she hits that lock. Don't, that, don't forget about Staxter chasing it down, though, either. <laughs> that was remarkable in its own right. That's the kind of defense that gets the crowd on their feet. And there was an eruption. Have another look at that one. Staxtrude saying, go away. Please stop playing defense. That ball ended up 10 rows deep. I was counting the rows and how deep that ball went on the overhead from Stacks Root. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Andrea Coop catches the tape. Well, and that's hard, too. You have so many different types of speed-ups, locations of speed-ups, but you also have tempos of speed-ups, and that was just slightly off speed, so her paddle just not quite the right timing. Andre Deescu comes up with that one. The Milwaukee Mashers looking to run away with a four-point lead, four points away from closing in on this match. Andrea Coop catches the backside of Andre Deas Coop. Yeah. Smart choice. And again, just like Cam said, it's not about speed ups, it's about the tempo and the pace of the speed ups. Coop goes 50% behind Deas Coop with a little slip inside out. Perfect. Well, hello, Andrea Coop, in keeping them alive in that. And basically, an overhead from Andre Dascu. She just resets in the middle of all that. Just long for Smith, and it's like again a one point game. Momentum swings in this rally scoring is second to none. Andrea Coop to serve to Smith. Oh, hey. 
Not the time you want to make that error. And so the mash was on top by two. Sailing long for Andrea Coop. Yeah, it's hard when you're going from defense. One of the things you typically do is you try and your weight ends up slightly backwards because you're taking pace off. And she had the opportunity to get offensive, but her weight was still going backwards. with game point on their side. If this ball came back, they were going to be in trouble because Callie put so much on that. My goodness. The Mashers searching for their first win. Andre Deescu and Callie Joe Smith embrace after this one. Just look at this final point. Just beautifully done. There's the Ernie. That pickup from Deescu was impressive enough. And then, my goodness, Stackstrude showing his chops on that tweener. It's soon to come. There it is. Just a beautiful thing. This one nearly making it. And then Stackstrude just getting caught on that right shoulder, just so dangerous. He hits the floor, but ultimately, Mashers, just an incredible journey. All smiles on the side of the Milwaukee Mashers. Cameron Blackwood standing by with the team that just got their first match win. Cameron. Kelly, what an incredible match to end on right now. You guys go 3-0. and oh. You started to go to Fed's backhand early on. What were you seeing? Uh, I've played him before, and I found some success there. Uh, obviously, he's way more solid than I played him last time. He had yeah. great uh, shots back. That was, that was definitely a battle between the two of the four of us. Um, it was well, well fought by, uh, I would say, both teams. Um, obviously, I had to stop going there at times, and I went through the forehand a few times. I think he was ready for the backhand. So that mix-up uh, ended up working out really well for us. You guys, not a great start yesterday, 0-2, but you came in. What changes did you make before stepping on the court today? Uh, we knew we still have a chance, so we, we gave it all we had. We came up with a lot of energy. We stayed aggressive. We tried to play our games. We tried to stay positive, and uh, it worked out well for us. And Lucy, what does this win do for your team, showing this is how much fight you have to continue, hopefully, into the rest of this weekend? So I told them our team, like, it's now or never, because if we would have lost this match, we would be out. So it's like, if we want to have a fighting chance, we have to win, and we have to win, like, like we mean it. So I think it just gives us confidence to go forward. And thank you, everybody, for cheering for us here. Yeah. Masters take on VLQ, Kate. Go 3-0. We'll see if they're still in this weekend. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.